Okay, rational functions, um, there's three things we want to look at. We want to be able to find the domain, the range, not the range, the domain, uh, the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes. Um, I've made up an example here, f of x, where x plus 2 is on top of x squared minus 16. And we want to state the domain. Our focus will be on the bottom. And what causes the fraction, the bottom of the fraction to turn to 0? So let's solve that. That would factor as the difference of squares. x plus 4, x minus 4. Therefore, we would not want the number negative 4 to ever show up as being a number to use or the number positive 4 because that would cause the denominator here to be 0, which would be very bad. So the domain is x is not 4 and negative 4. The vertical asymptotes. Once you knew what numbers caused the denominator to turn to 0, then you can uh, state those as where the vertical asymptotes occur. So, for example, here we had this factored out on the previous slide as x plus 4, x minus 4. And so we know that at x is negative 4 and at x is positive 4, we will have vertical asymptotes. So basically, what the domain can't be is where the vertical asymptotes do occur. Horizontal asymptotes. There are three conditions you want to be aware of when determining horizontal asymptotes. You want to look at the problem and identify the coefficients, or the lead term, I should say, not the coefficients, the lead term of the top and the bottom part of the fraction. Uh, and then look at the exponents. And in this case, we have an x to the first on top of an x squared. I would refer to this as a bottom-heavy condition. And any time the bottom is heavy, the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, will be y equals 0. And if it's top-heavy, if the top is uh, like an x cubed over an x squared, that would not ever have a horizontal asymptote. So we would say there's no horizontal asymptote. And that leaves one last condition. If the, the exponents are the same, then I would consider that to be kind of a balanced scenario. And for a balanced scenario, you just peel the... Uh, you peel the ordered pair the, right off the front there, the coefficients right off the front, 3 over 2. So you have y equals 3 over 2 as the uh, horizontal asymptote in that case. So the three conditions, top heavy, no horizontal asymptote exists. Bottom heavy is always y equals 0. And balanced is the one where you consider the lead coefficients of the terms. And that is exactly your horizontal asymptote. Okay, slant asymptotes are asymptotes that kind of come in at an angle. Uh, we will look at those on the calculator in class. But uh, to find out the equation of the line that, that uh, kind of comes in there at an angle, um, the graph might get closer and closer to, in say, cases like this maybe. Um, to find that equation of that line, we do what is known as long division here. So it's going to feel a little bit like uh, old school division. So we take the bottom, x plus 3, and we divide it into the top, x squared minus 4x minus 5. And you start by asking yourself the question, what do you multiply x by to get x squared? And that would be an x times an x that gives us x squared. Then we actually do that multiplication. We take x times x and get x squared, and we do x times 3 and get 3x. Well, the next thing you did when you long divided in this process is you changed those signs. So we will change this to a negative, and we'll change this to a negative, and now we can think addition. When you add x squared to a negative x squared, you get nothing. When you add a negative 4x to a negative 3x, you get negative 7x. Well, then we bring down the next term, bring down the uh, minus 5, and basically rinse, lather, repeat that process all over again. So we're going to start that same process over again. What do you take x times to get negative 7x? Well, a negative 7. Then you just take negative 7 times x and get 
negative 7x, and then you take negative 7 times negative 3, negative 7 times negative 3, and get negative 21. We will change the signs, and now we will just add down. So those, negative 7x and positive 7x, are gone, and a negative 5 plus 21 is 16. Now once you get down to the remainder, um, that's it now. We, we have this x minus 7 as our uh, slanted line equation. So we would just say the equation of the slanted line is y equals x minus 7. The remainder is not relevant here to what we're trying to do and, uh, and can just be forgotten about. So y equals x minus 7 is the slant asymptote here.